so-called conventional technology, conventional sensors like radar sensor, camera, ultrasonics, and um, lidar scan, uh, laser scanner. All of those sensors have limitations regarding how far they are they can they can view, and also the opening angle of lenses. That means what we need is then, if we want to detect something, then an obstacle vehicle, pedestrian, whatever, needs to be in this field of view of a sensor. Then the, the, the algorithm can classify, can 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 um, detect. Okay, there is someone. It classifies a valid object, and then it could be used for warnings, braking, whatever. But those limitations can't see, or with this limitation, we can't see around corners. That means, as you could see on the right, mm -hmm. there's a blue wall, and we can't see around this corner. What what you build up here is a typical accident scenario on an intersection, obscured intersection. And the, this vehicle here is equipped with a so-called V2V technology, V2V communication, based on Wi-Fi technology. We have an antenna on top of this roof, which has an opening angle of 360 degrees and range of 500 meters. That means with this antenna, with this technology, we can look around corners, communicate to other vehicles. We are using Wi-Fi technology, similar Wi-Fi te technology which you are using for your smartphone at home, computer, whatever. Um, but we have modified the uh, protocol for the usage of automotive applications. That means very fast, very low system latencies and secure, of course, that no one can hack into the system uh, for misuse and so on. And what we um, set up here is a two scenarios. The first one is a so-called intersection assist. And uh, I think I should start to give you a first demonstration about the intersection assist. Mm -hmm. Du bist fertig? Ja. Los. As you could see, okay. before I even, neither my eyes nor any sensor on this vehicle could see that someone was coming from the right. But with Wi-Fi technology, I received the information that both vehicles are sending out their past history and also their past prediction. And as soon as both passes are on a collision course and a certain uh, minimum time gap is achieved, then I received this warning. I'll make it again. You can experience it twice. <laughs> okay. You could see here on this um, diagnostic screen is for development purposes here, it's the early research level technology. That this turns to yellow first, or first to green, that is a valid object, then to yellow, that's coming closer. And then if it is red, then it will be linked. That means it's a visual warning, and of course, what is more important, the audible warning, and have to intervene. Yeah, I will do it again. Do it fertig. Yeah. Und los. Before I even could see something, he sent the system, received the information and gave me the warning. Interesting. What you could imagine with this technology and knowing where all our traffic partners are, we could build up a lot of different use cases and scenarios. For example, if someone is in our blind spot, if, if oncoming traffic warnings, emergency braking ahead. Um, but also we could communicate to, um, to the infrastructure. V2, V2V is, is normally V2X, X standing for vehicle or infrastructure. Mm. As you could see the traffic light over there, and you could see next to the red light there's a number counting down, 25, 24. It means it indicates to the drivers, okay, in a few seconds it will change to green. In the future, traffic lights infrastructure is also equipped with uh, this technology and it will send out information about green faces that means um, to be more efficient better fuel consumption the system can receive information about the green faces of the oncoming traffic lights that i can adapt my speed that i'm exactly in the, in the right speed range that i don't need any unintended deceleration acceleration whatever and the whole traffic flows much more efficient yeah and if you have even more market penetration then you could imagine features like platooning that means on a freeway on a highway on an autobahn you need only just a single lead vehicle who's doing all the driving tasks and then i could hook to hook onto this 
um, following in a gap of maybe one meter, and then a couple of vehicles can do this, activate platooning function on, and then via communication to each other, no, every vehicle knows exactly and receives information. If the first vehicle starts braking, this information will be within milliseconds sent to all the other vehicles, and they can adapt their vehicle speed as well. Yeah. What we build up here is a second scenario. Again, as at the moment I can see my, my partner, he will start driving and stops at the end of the road. That means it's absolutely out of the field of view of, our, of us. And as soon as I'm starting, and he will stop there. I'm driving around the corner, as soon as I'm around the corner, then I'm receiving already the information, be careful, uh, um, slow down because of there's a there's potential forward collision warning. And you will see it here as well. It change first to green, then yellow, and then red with an audible warning again. Du kannst los? Okay. I received the information already quite early, and I could very comfortable slowly slow down the vehicle without any emergency interaction required to avoid an accident. These are just two examples as what, what can be done. This is really a kind of huge step forward as soon as we have those technology on board, those sensors on board, and if you would fuse this with other information, you could imagine a lot of scenarios where you can assist the driver and also reduce potential accidents in the future. So what's the range of the signal right now? Like um, this is the antenna has a typical range of up to 500 meters. Of course it depends on the environment. If we have a free empty space like here, it's maybe roughly 500 meters. And if you're driving through more more obscured, more, 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 um, 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 more uh, less wide, um, tight roads where you have high buildings, then depending on the reflection of the building and so, we have a reduced um, range, but it's still sufficient. Maybe it's 200, 300 meters still. What's and the frequency band in which you're operating? Um, it's um, the same frequency as a 90801.c uh, um, protocol, as a typical Wi-Fi frequency. Um, and what, what we have done to make this really efficient, I think for this fourth collision warning scenario, time is maybe a little bit less critical. It can be maybe one second earlier or, or later, then we are still in a good shape. But for this intersection scenario, we must be fast. We must be fast. That means what we have done, we have reduced this protocol um, to, a, to a minimum package because we don't need to transmit any HD videos or whatever. It's just a few information about position, uh, the pass, uh, the, um, the the, path, the history pass, the uh, the predictive pass, some v, um, some vehicle information like steering wheel angle, gas pedal, brake pedal, and so on. It means a small amount of information needs to be exchanged, but those need to be exchanged fast. It means within a few milliseconds, we know exactly what are, what our surrounding is doing at the moment. So it's an external antenna that needs to be on top of the car. So how it's how does that fit in with the aesthetic design and everything? This is. This is early research level here. We built this into normal production vehicles just for development reasons. In the future, of course, the GPS antenna, the Wi-Fi antenna will be fully, fully, fully um, integrated into the vehicle interior or the exterior. That means you won't see any additional antenna anymore. It's just for this demonstration here. And how many years away are we from seeing this technology? In the it's as mentioned before, we have on, on, on two continents, we are currently um, cert, um, um, researching this topic on North America. Um, and what is also quite important, not Ford only can do this and introduce, it makes no sense. But what you need to do is to, to find, to harmonize the complete um, industry. That means we have uh, in North America and also in Europe, all, all um, OEMs came together and agreed to a certain protocol to make it really efficient. That in, Ford can communicate to a GM or to a VW or to a Mercedes in the future. Um, that is quite important that we harmonize the protocol and that means uh, in the future um, around the globe vehicles will, if you would ship this vehicle to a different place, then it will communicate to a vehicle in North America, in Africa, in Europe. It, it, uh, and therefore 
and this is in a research level. And we have also a huge um, fleet currently running in North America of 3,000 vehicles where all different OEMs came together and this fleet is currently running and we are researching how this um, 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 this um, radio traffic, how we have limitations there, that means it's a research level, but the complete industry is, is working on that and I can't tell you a, a year, but it's a kind of, I would describe it as a kind of mid-term feature.